Hello, Osei Sink here, and welcome back to another video in the series where we are building patches from scratch on the Mini Brute 2. So in the previous episode, we ended up building a very evil, slightly weird sounding base. Um, and I don't want to give the perception that uh, the Mini Brute is just about those big evil sounds. So I thought today what we'll do is we'll create a super, super classic lead sound instead. So uh, in this patch, we're gonna keep things pretty uh, chill, pretty classic. Um, pretty simple, but we'll try and throw a, an interesting twist in uh, here and there just to keep a little bit of interest and make use of some of the features that the uh, Mini Brute has. But I'm conscious that I'm going to try not to use features just because they're there and, and definitely sort of think carefully about whether or not it's adding something uh, useful to the patch. Uh, so uh, we've got our initialized patch which I talked about in episode zero of this uh, video. Uh, if you're interested in checking that out, then, then please do. Let's get to building the patch. So it might be cliche, but I think probably a good place to start with this patch is two sawtooth waves tuned an octave apart. You know, there's a reason that is classic. So uh, there's uh, uh, the one sawtooth wave, and if we bring an oscillator two, there's two, but currently they're unison. So let's tune this one up an octave. Or not quite an octave because you want them a little bit out of tune so you get that chorusing a little bit. You will notice on the way past, we did hit some other. Other intervals. We might revisit those. Maybe a little bit if we want to sound uh, like we're making prog rock uh, and maybe we do want to make prog rock uh, and let's not discount that as an option okay so that's a uh, one place to start um i'm wondering about maybe adding a little bit of fundamental in there with our um our triangle wave on vco one as well If you're listening on uh, good monitors or headphones, um, you'll hear that there's a point um, out there where it starts contributing some nice fundamental uh, just to keep things anchored. Okay, lovely. Um, let's also introduce a little bit of glide, a little bit of portamental. If we do very little else, that's kind of classic sounding. But let's darken this up a little bit. It's a little bit buzzy at the moment. Don't want to get it super, super dark, um, but maybe a little bit. So let's um, introduce a little bit of uh, movement to the filter. So the FM control by default. Uh, is um, linked to the ADSR envelope. So if we turn this up a little bit, and I think we'll go for like a moderate sort of uh, pluck-ish sound. I think we want an instant attack. a little bit of resonance to that as well. I think that's be a little bit pluckier, so we'll reduce the decay to get a bit more pluck to it. Drop that resonance a little bit. too much attack there so we'll just reduce the fm amount a touch sometimes it's nice to introduce a little bit of noise uh, to patches just in general it just gives them a little bit of character let's see how that feels 
Sometimes it can just emphasize what the filter's doing a bit. We don't want it to sound noisy, just kind of want to... Feeling it, I uh, will turn that off. Okay, so that's kind of getting there with a the kind of classic sound, I think. Uh, we probably want to make this AD envelope a little less snappy. So at the moment, this envelope is right away at the bottom. This is controlling our um, output VCA. A bit aggressive. Uh, so we'll just raise the attack and decay a bit. So let's open that. Cool, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, needs a bit more movement, it's a bit static at the moment. Uh, so let's have a think about... Oh, I've got that turned up there. That's why it was sounding weird. So I had this uh, knob turned up here, which meant that... My pressure was adjusting the, the filter there. That's better. Nice, okay. Uh, so we want a little bit of movement here. I'm kind of thinking probably some pitch vibrato would make sense. Um, so we've got an FM control for VCO1, but um, this is currently patched by default sort of in the background to VCO2 which means we get these sort of analog FM sounds which is a bit unstable but cool So we need to override this patching. That's straightforward to do. We'll take a patch cable and we'll go from the output of our LFO one we'll, we'll use, and we'll go into the FM control here. And now instead of it um, being controlled by the VCO2, instead we've got LFO one doing it. So if we... It's interesting, um, you, you kind of have this f feeling that sort of sine waves should be more gentle uh, when you've got them assigned to something, but actually because they spend more time at the top and the bottom, you end up quite unstable pitch modulation sometimes. It can be really cool if you want something a bit swampy, uh, but we'll switch to the triangle and you'll hear that it's a bit more sort of stable sounding. Um, I kind of want the filter moving a bit more, uh, sort of a slow fading in and out, perhaps. Um, so let's take uh, let's take the output of LFO two, and let's bring that into the um, attenuator one. So the reason we're going into the attenuator one is that this knob here, by default, uh, is a way of additionally adjusting the cutoff, um, distinct from the FM control. Um, and we want that, usually that's, uh, if I turn, unpatch this, is controlled by pressure, which was what I had turned on earlier. 
which is what was making things sound weird. Uh, but we can also have that patched from anything else. So yep, if we go into the input of that attenuator there, now it's been controlled by LFO2. modulations so that everything kind of flows nicely together. Slow them down a little bit. Now there's a big part of me now that wants to do that. Quite a nice bass sound. As you get further on when you're building a patch, you can find that there are certain things that you want to change. I mean, we were being a little bit faster with everything. Everything was moving a bit fast. The glide was too fast. It was adding a percussive start to the note. The envelope was a bit too choppy. Um, the attack from our um, filter was plucky, but actually, as we bring more stuff in, we found maybe we need to take everything a bit more slow and leisurely. the brute factor so the brute factor it adds sort of a feedback loop from the output into uh, the start of the filter i think um and uh, you know it can be totally out of control and on the uh, older generation of the mini brute the, mini, the original mini brute and micro brute maybe a bit over the top a bit too soon but let's just try adding a little bit so can, this first half of the knob now has a lot more nuance to it a bit of warmth and saturation might be nice so yes yeah, Introducing that bottom end. Slow that decay down on the filter envelope. So without the brute factor. With it. Darkens the sound a little bit, bit more saturation. Let's try and so without it, brighter, which we might want.
little bit of uh, reverb. I think we shall from the digi- the Digitech um, Polara. <laughs> So what I found interesting as I was building that patch is that my perception of what I wanted the patch to be um, changed as the patch came into being. You know, I thought I wanted certain things happening. I thought I wanted it to be more sort of plucky. But actually, um, as the synth started talking back and giving back to them, to, to, to what I was doing, it kind of told me that maybe I was going too fast and everything was a bit too percussive and all the modulation was too fast and uh, the glide was too fast and that was adding an attack to the note that didn't need to be there and um, and that kind of led to a much more gentle maybe more classic I'm not sure but but certainly a better patch I think you know that the, the synth led us to a, a more interesting place than maybe uh, we would have arrived to if we'd stuck to our original plan and you know that's sometimes the way that these patches go you know uh, we think we know what we want but you need to listen to what the synth is, is telling you um, sometimes and uh, yeah the, the mini brute uh, advised me well I think on this patch Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, uh, then please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed for more uh, Mini Brute stuff and also more synth stuff in general. It's always great to see new faces on the channel. As always, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.